Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. We're here in the studio with Mark, as per usual, and myself, Steve Martin, and we're going to look at some new motion material for uh, your enjoyment and Life happiness. Well, that was a little overselling, wasn't it? A little okay. bit. A little All right, bit, so yeah. what are we talking about today? So we're talking about kind of a neat thing that uh, actually one of, the, one of the folks on the forums who posted this guy named Simon Ubsdell. And Simon, I'm sorry if I got your name, uh, last name pronounced incorrectly, but it looks like Ubsdell. And Simon posts a lot of interesting things. And he posts a really great use for the link behavior, which I thought was worth sharing with people to kind of get it out there because it's a really interesting way to, to link two things together. For some... Creative purpose. For some creative purpose, right. And, you know, motion's full of all these behaviors for creating animation. Mm -hmm. And the link behavior is kind of one that people forget about and don't realize how powerful it is. I think this is a good example. So I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm starting here in a totally empty project just to build this from scratch because mm -hmm. it's pretty simple. And the first thing I'm going to do is just going to throw a background in. And frequently for a background, instead of just this black background, I'll just go into the generators folder and I'll drop a, uh, I'll drop a gradient and just add it to the project. And I usually don't like the way it looks by the default. It's very hard edge. Well, it's also linear. I'm gonna change the type to a radial gradient. So it looks more like that. <laughs> so it's kind of a ball yeah. that comes out. I'll right click on it and choose edit position. You can also edit this in the um, inspector, but I like this on-screen control that lets you really easily change the center. Oops, don't wanna move the whole thing. Just wanna change the center of it, kind of spread it out. I'm holding on a command space bar and dragging out uh, so I can make some room and really kind of move it out. And you can also change the colors uh, directly in here. I'll leave it in kind of a blue, but you can right click right on these color tags to change the colors of it. That's nice. Okay, so just nice interactive. So just a little bit of background there. That's my gradient. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie um, some numbers to a basically like a graph. I'm gonna do an arrow and as the arrow grows, the numbers will change and it'll be interactive. Interesting. So, yeah, a lot of times you, there's a lot of infographics now, right? All kinds of videos that show population change or budget or something and try to communicate. Zombie hordes attacking, you just get in. Yeah, or just <laughs> communicating like yeah. like uh, dry information in an engaging way. You're right. You know, using motion graphics. Infographics. Just, yeah, a lot of great stuff out there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna draw a line. I'm gonna go down here to our drawing tools and select the line. I'm gonna click and drag up and add the shift key so I get a straight up and down line. Then I'll hit escape so that I get out of the line tool. I can make some changes to it. I'll change the color. Maybe I'll make it more of a, a reddish color. And then I wanna make some other changes to it. I'll increase the width. And then to do more, I need to go to the inspector. So I'm gonna close the heads up display, go to the inspector, over to the style of the line. For the start cap, I'm just gonna say none. So we get a flat bottom to the line. And then for the end cap, I'm gonna to choose to put an arrow on it. So this nice arrow here. It's kind of a, I don't like it, how it looks by default, so I'm gonna make a little skinnier arrow and maybe not quite as tall uh, in terms of the arrow length. So maybe something like that, okay? So that's my arrow. Not, uh, yep. not too big a deal, pretty simple. Maybe I'll move it down and over a little bit. And now I'm gonna add uh, some text for my numbers. So rather than just uh, adding some text, I'm actually going to go to the library to generators again because there's some... generators in there, Yeah, isn't it? yeah, there are these text generators mm -hmm. that folks might forget about. So what's kind of cool about them, there's a number generator. And if I apply and throw this in here, now right by default, it's very, very small. You can barely Why would see, it, see in, it in there. Why would put it in so small? Yeah, it's, really... it's very, very small. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the format, the text generator inspector to the format pane and crank the size way up so we can really see what's going on there. There we go. And while we're in here, let's go over to the style section. You're gonna change the font, aren't you? Uh, actually, I kind of like this font. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a font, a different color. So if I play now, that thing just changes. It animates by default, uh, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, but it's not exactly what I wanna have happen. So if we go back to the uh, text generator, to the generator pane, I'm actually gonna turn off animate, okay? Because what I want this to animate by, as, as this arrow changes... The numbers change. The numbers change, exactly. In fact, as the, the red on this is bothering me. Let me make it a little darker red. There we go. So how can we make this arrow change? How can we make it grow? The and behavior? one way... Uh, sort, sort of. <laughs> Water? <laughs> food? Sorry. Okay, stop. So um, 
yes, with the behavior, but we need to figure out what to animate, you know, what thing to animate. So we have this first and last point offset. If we drag the first point offset, it gets shorter from the bottom. If we drag the last point offset, you know, it sort of shows, it animates the arrow, right? So this is the thing that we want to cause the value of the numbers to change. Okay. Okay. So somehow you're going to map that uh, last point offset to the number changing. Somehow. Yeah, exactly. So let's oh, with the link behavior. There you go. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so, so we'll select the numbers and you can, often it's like, which one do I apply it to? And you can really go either way. So I'm going to go to the numbers and in the generator, there is this value uh, parameter. If I drag on it, See, it allows you to keyframe value rather than animating through the checkbox. You which can just set automates the initial it. value is what you're what you Yeah, you could keyframe this, but instead what I'm going to do is right click right on the word value, or you could use this little animation menu over here, either way. And I'm going to choose to add a parameter behavior, mm -hmm. link. Link. Okay. And when you do that, it says, well, okay, I'll link this value, but what do you want me to link it to? So I'll say, well, I want it to link to this line right here. Oh, you have a drop while you just drop it right yeah, in there. Yeah, just drop in there. And then there's this source parameter uh, pop-up menu. So I'll just go there and say, oh, properties, object, shape, and then just try to find roundness, fill, outline. There it is, outline, last point offset. Oh, wow. That's what I'm going to link it to. So I choose that. So now if I go back to that line and change its last point offset. Oh, look at that. It's the numbers move the values. with it. Yeah. Yep. So, so all you need to do to have these work in lopstep now is keyframe this guy to change over time, and then the numbers will automatically change along with it at the that's same pretty, time. That's pretty, uh, I can see a lot of uses for this. Yeah, all kind of kind of things. You're like, well, maybe I don't want it to go down. Let's say you want it to go up to 200 instead of 100. Right. All you need to do is go back to the link behavior, to the behaviors inspector, and there's a scale parameter. So right now the scale is a one-to-one -one correlation. So as the line goes from zero to 100%, the numbers go from zero to 100. But let's say we wanted that to go to 200. Let's just double the scale. So I'll type uh, two in there. And immediately you see these numbers jump up. And if I go back to the line and drag the last, last point, we can see now it scales from zero to 200. Zero to 200. Yeah, so really easy to change the, um, you know, the relationship between the two. Uh, just another example of how you can link the parameter any, almost any parameter of any object can be linked so to almost you can anything even else. Do this in that motion. Can yeah, you do this cool. in After Effects? But maybe motion map. Yeah, but in After Effects, you do more of the pick whip kind of thing. Right. Uh, but this is the same kind of idea. And I'll just show you. I built one other example just to show you uh, another example. Like this. This is a little different. This is a pie chart, a little three D pie chart. Yep. And I built it using a replicator. Mm -hmm. I took a line and I animated. Uh, I didn't animate. I, I replicated this line so that it forms this pie and linked it to this value. So check this out. If I select the replicator, it has an angle end parameter, and you can see there's a behavior applied. See right there, a little gear That's there? Gear, yeah. Okay, and that gear indicates that this link, it's linked to the value of the numbers. So this time I'm going to go to the numbers. If I change the number value, see I linked this one the other way, right? Because this is now linked so that if I change the number value, that pi grows. To a higher percentage. Yeah, so of, I can go up to 100% or I can go down to any any so proportion of it. 24% of the world is infected and then like 90 Yeah, you're thinking, you're thinking I, I am legend, I can't get right? A, no, yeah, just zombie <laughs> horde. You gotta that's track right, it, that's yeah. right, that's right. So very easy way to link up the uh, a text field, this, right. this uh, number generator to anything. Right. Uh, we linked it up to last point offset and here we linked it to this angle end parameter of replicator. So just it gives you some idea of the different variations that are possible uh, using the link behavior. That's a really, really um, useful uh, thing you just showed. I mean, I, I had no idea you could do that, to link two different disparate things like graphics and numbers and, and make them like correlate to each other. Yeah, it's super useful. Really... And, and again, thanks Simon for, uh, for pointing that out. He actually helped somebody online and I was like, that, that, more people need to know about that stuff. So Fantastic. make some examples up of that, yeah. So excellent. Uh, if you want to know more about motion, uh, check out Mark's training. We have the full, full featured uh, motion training set on rippletraining.com. Check it out. Uh, follow us at rippletraining.com. And of course, check out our future MacBreak Studios. We have a lot to show you. Check out our plugins. And again, we want to thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.